Uh, so just quickly today, we're going to try to cover in, a, in 30 minutes or less, um, as, as the title of the uh, webinar suggests, uh, compost use uh, for erosion and sediment control. So we'll spend some time talking on uh, using compost for erosion control and stormwater management. Um, we're also going to talk a bit about surface erosion control on construction sites and what can be done about that. Um, and then we'll go into some specifications, different types of compost, uh, application methods, and then we will um, get a little bit into what kinds of implications this could have on LEED certification or, or LID, or, you know, regarding to uh, LID uh, standards, low impact development. So um, again, thanks for joining us, and I'll bring Jared in here and I'll shuffle off to the side. Thanks, Elliot. Um, as Elliot had mentioned, we are uh, this is a, this is the second in the series here, so <clears throat> we may cover um, a number of things that we have uh, talked about in the last presentation. Um, but uh, again, if if you need reference, uh, feel free to to visit the uh, the YouTube channel or to uh, shoot us an email, and we're happy to get information to you. So. Um, using compost for erosion and sediment control is uh, is new, um, and what we're going to talk about today is soil and water, and try to you know, bring to light how compost uh, relates to erosion control and sediment control, and then you know talk about uh, a few of the specs and and compost and what's important to look for. And then um, you know we'll show some some uh, compost-related best management practices in the field. Um, I should mention that uh, the specifications for using compost are uh, are quite well developed, and we have a design manual that is available to uh, you as designers or um, contractors or um, municipalities. Um, that sheds light on you know the appropriate use for compost and the specs um, it, there that would be a lot of information to go through here in, in 20 minutes or half an hour so um, the specifications would be separate we are happy to help you with them if you have a project uh, if you want more information and we do have a design manual that's available for you um, you just need to ask for it um, so let's talk about compost and how it relates to um, erosion sediment control um, as mentioned in the terrace seeding uh, program we do, you know, our business is forced byproducts or organic materials and so using <coughs> land clear, um, green waste, that type of thing in different ways is what we do uh, through composting methods, through aging methods um, and, uh, and we're really focused on using the material as value added products uh, for development. So. Uh, we showed this slide in the terrace seeding um, presentation and it, it really looks and relates at water and how what water does as we develop and this forest or undisturbed environment versus this the city or, or developed environment and really the key is is surface runoff and so we'll attempt to show you how compost helps um, control surface runoff and of course surface runoff leads to erosion and erosion uh, leads to sedimentation and that's where the cycle is. So we showed this slide in the last one again looking at in the bubble the um, the importance of a, of a, a topsoil or a, a top layer of soil that um, is uh, rich in microbial activity that has structure so not necessarily a, a topsoil as we usually understand to be screened uh, but a, a top layer or organic um, horizon of soil that really plays a key role in holding soil in place, um, holding moisture and then providing nutrients for, for vegetation. And so an undisturbed environment, this is a shot, um, screenshot out of a, a program called Soils for Salmon which has been running in, in Washington for quite some years. And it looks at surface runoff, you can see 15%, very little surface runoff compared to infiltration and evaporation. And it really has to do with the top horizon of the soil, which is the organic horizon, which is almost completely made up of organic material or compost. The disturbed environment, you see in the bubble, this is an area that was uh, likely, you know, developed to put houses in. And, 
And what we find is that <clears throat> that top layer is not there and not developed. And what happens is we get a lot of surface runoff and very little uh, transpiration, uh, very little uh, uh, control or holding of moisture. And the result is erosion. And then again, sedimentation, which is uh, depositing of, of sediment. So when we talk about erosion and sediment control, it's very important to look at those two terms and separate them out. Often, if you're in a civil um, design environment or a contractor environment, we hear this term erosion and sediment control all lumped into one. They're very different and to understand them allows us to use the appropriate product, in this case compost based, to address the issue. So uh, the first definition is erosion, which is the physical removal of soil particles followed by transport to another location. Um, the key uh, uh, agents of erosion are wind, water, and heavy equipment is a huge one. Um, so when you do erosion control, when we look at erosion control, we want to keep material in place. All right, so um, that helps us determine what kind of, uh, of erosion control BMPs or best management practices to look at. Um, the key with erosion is if things don't move, you don't have to deal with it. And that's where we get low impact development and lead and you know best management practices, erosion and sediment control bylaws that start to look at how do you plan your site. There's nothing better to deal with erosion than planning. But we know in the real world that we live in, that is not often uh, hard to do. Um, we have a development that, that uh, you know, clients that want to that work, that they want development to be done. And so um, simply not working when it's raining is not always an option. So, but the key is, if it doesn't move, if you can avoid it, if you can plan around it, it's the best way to deal with erosion. The second term is sedimentation, and that's the act of deposition. So um, once erosion has happened and soil particles are, are mobilized or moved, um, you know, sedimentation happens when that material is transported and it settles out. Um, sedimentation or sediment control is expensive and it is not an easy thing to do. We see things like flocculants, um, you know, barriers, filters, there's all sorts of BMPs or best management practices that have developed to deal with sediment, but sedimentation is difficult and it's expensive to do. So again, if you can plan around it, um, it it's the best way to approach the issue. Um, if you can't, then using the appropriate BMP is, is what you want to do. So some common best management practices, which uh, I'm sure most of you have heard of, but just again to s separate them. Erosion control uh, would be a hydro seed and a mulch. Not hydro seeding on its own or broadcast seeding. Uh, hydro seed and mulch is the key. Um, terra seeding fits into that too with the appropriate medium. Um, straw, you know, wood fiber chips. Gabions, rolled blankets, wattles, concrete, riprap. Um, those are the things that are usually looked at for erosion control. And we'll show you compost-based ones as well uh, further on here. Uh, in terms of sediment control, your most common ones would be silt fence, um, you know, straw wattles, core blankets, uh, straw bales, you know, rock check dams, uh, plastic, poly is one of them that uh, is used quite a bit and then lots of geotextiles. Again, we'll, we'll show you um, the compost-based BMPs here as we go. But um, again, different tools, you're using different tools for erosion control uh, than for sediment control. Um, I've mentioned in the last presentation <coughs> um, research, this is actually a, just a snapshot right off of, uh, of the Filtrex uh, website. So we are Denbo, we are the BC agents for Filtrex products as well as uh, Rexius erosion control products, and both of them are compost-based. So there's a whole series of products that are developed around compost. But um, there's a lot of information out there about using compost for erosion control, and this is just a little snapshot of, of uh, what you can find on the website. But, um, you know, Ashto's standard specifications, university-level research on using compost. Um, and so there's lots out there. If you just Google erosion, uh, Erosion control with compost, you'll get hits uh, upon hits of information that's out there. Um, <clears throat> but this is available on the Filtrex website through our site. 
Um, but kind of a summary of why we would want to use erosion, uh, compost for erosion sediment control, you know, a couple of points here that I like to make normally. The number one is that it really promotes your natural soil conditions. We know that from research, nature is able to control erosion and limit sedimentation um, naturally. And so if we can look at producing materials or emulating the natural conditions uh, by building up soil, we're going to be better at erosion, sediment control, stormwater management, that type of thing. Um, soil structure, I mentioned um, compost and the structure that it gives, the woody debris that's in it, uh, is very important for promoting soil life and also promoting soil structure. Um, invasive species is a thing that, uh, that compost uh, advocates have, have touched on for years, but the fact that, that compost is um, running through a process, has been run through a process that um, uh, brings temperature up to kill weed seeds and pathogens is important. And then uh, uh, probably the newest thing about compost that has been discovered is that compost will act like a filter. And we'll see, especially through the use of uh, Rexius and, and the Filtrex products, that they've been able to capture and be, be and able to emulate the, the filtering um, characteristics of compost um, in a number of different um, uh, projects and, and um, products that they have. Um, and and the, that's kind of three steps. There's a physical blocking and trapping. There's this chemical binding, which is very interesting. Um, and then there's this ability to degrade um, compounds uh, by microbial activity, things like hydrocarbons um, and pollutants. So that's a very interesting side of uh, compost that's developing very quickly. Um, and then an another one, of course, is very important, is just closing the gap. This is another way to use organic material that's been, dilute, uh, by, been diverted from waste streams um, and using it in a way that benefits uh, development. Um, so what we want to do is, is just touch on, I've just broken them into two things, again the erosion control applications and filter applications or sediment control applications um, and I'll show you some photos of what they look like. Um, both of these are eligible for lead um, uh, points. So again, if you'd like information about that, uh, we have some real easy quick information we can just um, email you on. Uh, compost-based BMPs and their um, uh, credits, uh, lead credits, for instance. Um, but uh, for erosion control applications, that would be a grow, what we call a grow media um, application. Uh, grow media is a certified um, compost material that's used for erosion control. And we use that for compost blankets or we have some proprietary products, one's called Eco Blanket. Um, for living walls and stream bank stabilization. But there are a host of other uh, products that there are specs available on that you can look at for um, specific projects. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea on, on how, how it works. Um, I showed a few of these slides again in the terrace seating um, uh, presentation we did. But again, I just want to bring this back to show uh, how you would use, for instance, a compost blanket, or we would call an eco blanket, um, on a slope side by side with hydro mulch or, or hydro seed. Um, so it's a surface soil um, treatment. Its uh, purpose is to recreate the organic horizon of soil that would have been there before it was disturbed. And so it typically goes on at one to two, three inches in depth or 50 millimeter in depth. It's typically terraceded, so that's where this fits in with terraceding, although it could be hydroceded if you needed to. Um, but it's a soil uh, surface treatment, okay? And again, this is slides that we went through before. It replaces rolled blankets. So we have uh, specifications that are available for using it on steep slopes up to one to one. Um, one horizontal, one vertical slopes, uh, and using it to control erosion in place of a, of a rolled mat.